Hello everyone, this is Vrishali and welcome back to my YouTube channel CSN IT Tutorials by Vrishali. In our previous some sessions, we have discussed about all the important topics of database with real life examples and practical demonstrations. I have mentioned a complete database management system subject playlist link in below description box. Now, in today's session, we will discuss our next topic that is centralized versus client server architecture. Let's start the session. In this session, first we will discuss types of DBMS, then centralized and client server architecture with examples and at the end important question bank. Please share this playlist with your friends so that will be beneficial for everyone. Now, the first topic is what exactly types of DBMS. So these types have divided into two ways that is on the basis of number of users and second on the basis of location of server. Number of users have divided into the two types. Either it is single users or multiple users use the database. Next, location of server had divided into the four types of architecture. That is centralized architecture, client server architecture, distributed architecture and parallel architecture. In today's session, we will discuss centralized and client server database management system. In next session, we will discuss distributed and parallel database management system. So let's see. Now, the first point is what exactly centralized architecture. The centralized. This name suggests that all the data have stored at centrally at one location, which is called as server. See here in this particular image, there are total three components of centralized architecture. First, server which is also called as centralized database. Second, multiple clients, which are connected to the same database. And the third one is a network. All are connected within the network, right? So this is called as centralized architecture. All the com client computers is stored, manage and access the data from this central server at same location. So this is called as centralized architecture. Let's see some examples like college management system. Assume that there is a one main computer in your admin department which stored all the department information, student information as well as college information. So your teacher can access the data from their own PC, right? Means all the data stored centrally. Next one is a banking system. Here all the data related to the customers, their account information, transaction information, all this details stored at central office at head of the particular department, right? And all the other different branches of that bank, they access those data from their own computers. Again, central library system, it stored all the information about books in one computer. So the particular student suppose want a particular book, they check in that system, it is available or not available, right? So what is the basic concept? everything stored centrally. Now, what are the advantages of centralized architecture? The main advantages is it is very easy to update and manage the data because everything stored centrally. Also, it provide higher security policies. Also, it is easy to backup because data is stored at single server and all the users get most recent and accurate data. Now on the another side, there are also disadvantages of centralized architecture. Suppose a central server crash or fell down. So what happened? No one can access the data, right? Also, it is very hard to scaling because many users access the same database at the same time. That's why server load increase. Also, their performance get slowed down, right? And suppose network fail, so client device can't connect it to the central server. So all these disadvantages will overcome in different architecture like client server architecture, parallel or distributed architecture, right? So this is called as centralized architecture. Now, the next one is a client server architecture. So basically, there are also total three components, clients, server and the network. So clients means what exactly? Client means user computer, users mobiles, right? Any other front end application that user send request to the server. So this is the client side. 
on server side server receive a client request process it and send accurate result to the client so in client server architecture this server which work as a large workstation it is a most powerful system right let's see some examples like e-commerce website like amazon flipkart mintra so there is a client and server side client means customer use a particular flipkart application customer install flipkart amazon on their mobile right they use the front end display of that particular application next one is a server server stored all the product related data user information their different orders right so when client search a particular product means client send request to the server and server return the result right so this is called as client server architecture here suppose client apply a filter suppose client want to search a laptop so they apply the filter that is less than 50000 rupees right so server accept those request process it and send result according the user requirement so this is a client server architecture now next one is a email system so email system like our gmail so this is the best example of client server architecture here is also client and server so client means your gmail application there is a proper browser is there right you can access a gmail by using your browser and on the another side there is a gmail server everyone having the different server like gmail server yahoo server is there so this particular server access your information and display the result accordingly for example when you click on inbox so client request all the mails in your inbox to the server and server send data accordingly so this is called as client server architecture on the another different applications nowadays like hospital management system railway reservation system like food ordering system like zomato so everywhere used client server architecture so these are the different advantages of client server architecture like server handle heavy database processing because multiple user access the same database right uh, let's take an example of zomato so multiple user order a particular food at the same time right means they handle the heavy database processing they handle the heavy data so this is the best advantage of client server architecture you can easily add more client in it updation also made easy because updation can happen only on server side not a client side right and also uh, there is a clients don't directly access the database file they access the data by using server next what are the different disadvantages of this client server architecture suppose a server fail so client cannot access the data right and uh, sometimes what happened there was a higher traffic between client and server so they slow down the system so the best example of this when your university result was declared so everyone check the result at the same time right means university server was get slow down due to heavy load heavy traffic so these are the disadvantages of client server architecture so these are the some important questions that have asked in your previous year question paper like to describe centralized and client server architecture for six marks then difference between centralized and client server architecture and also with suitable diagram to explain centralized client server architecture so the answer is same but they ask differently for 6 to 8 marks so you have to prepare this question accordingly so this is all about thank you keep learning